Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Arkish, and I'm joined by my fellow uh, Andy and one of our club execs, Andrew. After weeks of research consulting with an urban planner who's currently a manager at Daniels Consulting and surveying our school and talking to Matthew, uh, we want to tackle one question, and that is how might we reduce transport time for baby users caused by traffic congestions that is exacerbated by crescent pickup and drop-offs? So we're gonna start off by looking at our site map. So as you can see on the image on the left, we have three lanes going out and one lane going in. And on the image on the right is the flow of traffic through Crescent. These images show the current bollard placement in our parking lot. Students stand behind them but only take up a fraction of the space, which is highly inefficient. As you can see here, this shows an aerial view of the Crescent entrance lane and the parking. We can kind of already see the disorganization that it has and moving on, we can see the two routes into Crescent the convenient right turn in, and the absurd left turn in, which we'll get into later. So here are some of the observations we've made on the crest of traffic lights. And on the image on the right, you can see how far backlogged the traffic is, both north and south. So some users of our site are students and staff, and students require parents to drop them off, so that's why we have parents, Ubers, and TTCs listed there as well. Yeah, some issues we identified in behavior were, first of all, other baby users would queue into the turn-in lane on the left, not realizing that was for Crescent parents to come in. Also, Crescent parents in the parking lot would clog the flow, so we realized that we needed to make some changes. Tick-tock, tick-tock. You're waiting in the left turn lane, sweat trickling down your face, anxiously waiting to release the foot off the brakes. It's 8.29 a.m. and school starts in a minute. <laughs> what is inches away from turning in, last an eternity. This is exactly what hundreds of students face in the morning, and we need to find feasible solutions for our own peace of mind and to hopefully alleviate this harsh reality for future Crescent students. So some of the challenges that we face are that we're only allowed to manage Crescent properties. We're not allowed to directly modify government roads such as Bayview, but we're, we are allowed to advise the government on what we would like to see. So after identifying our issues and brainstorming multiple solutions, we decided on the most feasible to implement and most viable to address our needs, highlighted on the right. And here are our three final solutions that we decide on. First of all, we would implement roadside signs notifying baby users about the turn-in lanes. Second, we would redesign our parking lot, drop-off and pick-up area. And finally, we would intensify active school travel. The first two are supply-oriented, meaning they focus on changing the infrastructure on our site. And the third is uh, demand-oriented, meaning they would change the behavior. And we can combine these two for a holistic approach to this issue. So taking a look at the first key issue, which is the turn-in lanes, we already have a pretty reasonable solution, which is the implementation of road signs. This informs users that the left turn lane, sorry, the left lane turns into the school and to steer clear otherwise. It also reduces cycle times as a whole with smoother flow. We're currently already in contact with the municipal government and an MPP for our school's district to implement this sign. So the second solution tackles the key issue of inefficient internal space usage. So as you can see on the picture on the left, there's different color highlighted, there's different areas highlighted in different colors. Red shows what we currently have. And what the problem with this one is, is that parents want to drop their kids off close to the school, so they stop where the black box is. Instead, we propose to move it to the green zone, and the blue is going to be where the bikes are, and the yellow dotted box is going to be where the students wait. The third solution uses a point incentive system and a voted cycle of personal rewards to motivate personal contribution. By incentivizing active school travel, there will be less cars on the road, less congestion, and therefore less frustrated users on our site. At the end of the day, our goal is to ensure a smooth flow of traffic by reducing the time for queuing, cycling, and exiting the school. Less congestions, less recklessness, less lates, shorter drives, and overall more efficiency. The budget below will be expanded on further in the upcoming slides. So here are some of the visuals to help you understand our slides and our 3D model. So on the left is the sign that we're going to be trying to implement onto Bayview to help parents and other vehicles know that left turn lane is turning into Crescent. And on the right is a 3D model of what our second solution is going to be like. We estimate the cost of the remodel to be a minimum of $1,000, including covering and repainting the lines and relocating the traffic bollards. Furthermore, we will only use incentives with no cost or negligible cost. For example, casual dress as our school has uniform. So what are the next steps? After confirming the possibility of a remodeling with admin, we will send out a poll in a weekly email. This school will additionally cover the cost if approved. 
As the Vice President of the Outreach Council, I can also create a new initiative for fundraising within the school. We will also conversate with the upper school admin to decide on more incentives, and lastly, continue discussing with the City Department of Art and Science. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and we are representing Crescent School for One Up Toronto. Um, I couldn't see the map. What is Fayview, but what's your other intersection? It's, it's just along Bayview. Um, our schools will get on the side of Bayview. One of the major intersections is Lawrence and Bayview. Okay. So, my la next and last question is, um, what, 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 what riding and what ward are you in? It's the Don Valley East Ride. Okay. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Um, I am just curious, so you outlined kind of three solutions um, or priorities within that, and there was, um, I don't know exactly what you called it, but transportation de demand management was in there, I think as the priority number three. So shifting more trips to walking and cycling and other, other modes, sustainable modes. I was wondering why that was not your priority one, just because thinking about it, it's often a really cost-efficient way to um, shift travel behavior. Um, but I also am looking at that map thinking it might be very difficult to bike or walk there. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I don't live in the area, but maybe you could expand on how come that was three, not, not higher on the list. Right, sorry. Um, it might have been a little bit confusing, but we didn't mean that was our third priority, just if that happened to be the order we put it in the slides. Yeah, sorry, that was a little bit confusing. Okay, thank you. Well, within that then, um, just a follow-up is that uh, what is it condition, conditions right now? Is it possible to bike safely there or walk safely currently? Yeah, so in the summer, I bike to school. But however, in the winter, or most winters, not this winter, because it's pretty warm this winter, as we all know, but most winters, there's a lot of snow. And the problem with our school is that it's kind of located where there's not much north and there's not much south out. We have the Baby Bridge on the south, which is kind of difficult to bike or walk across, it's quite long. And then north, there's not a lot of residential areas for it until like North Mills, which is like almost a kilometer away. Thank you. Thanks guys, this was a really great pitch. Really clearly, tightly defined problem, tightly defined solution. I wonder if you guys can articulate what you might anticipate would be your challenges and what kind of mitigation strategies you thought of? Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, so the biggest challenges that we're kind of facing right now is the municipality agreeing to with our idea about letting us put the sign on. Uh, one of the major things we see is that there's kind of like this blind spot where um, out of Post Road, which is like the Bridal Path area, when they turn on to Bayview, the problem is the cars don't really know what lane is going where. And so that sign would really, really help cars understand that the reason why there's such a huge jam on this left side of the road is because they're all turning into Crescent. Um, and so I guess one of our biggest um, difficulties at the, at the moment would be to be in contact with the, the municipal government and make sure that they try their best to approve it. The second thing being with our current admin. Um, Crescent School is independent, so it doesn't necessarily deal with uh, any TDSB um, higher orders or anything. However, it is still a very, very difficult to get things done because there's just so many layers. Like there's a board of governors, there's like admin, there's upper school facilities. So I think our main problem is not the idea portion of it, but just getting those ideas passed to the people that can pass those, uh, those uh, ideas. Yeah, to add on to that, the key is just consistent communication. We've been replying to email chains with both the school admin and the city and um, it's a slow process, but it's getting done. Thank you for your questions. I really appreciate it.